cover me. Not a great start. Evil mutant, you dare challenge Apocalypse again? Blasphemer! You defile my sacred chamber! Go on. Take your best shot. You'll never win. I've got your answer right here. How are you guys? This is JP Sarri. Once again, I'm coming to you with another review. And this time I have one of the, um, what I would say, one of the coolest representations uh, of one of the, I would say, the most representative characters of the 90s, of the comics in the 90s. And in this case, it's Cable uh, by Bowen Designs. This is a piece that I, I was looking forward to review. Uh, one of my favorite characters back in the 90s. It is one of the characters that really resembles, uh, represents uh, what, what the 90s was all about, pretty much. Uh, an over-the-top character, an over-the-top um, storyline, and one that really um, re emphasized, you know, the culture and the way things were seen back in the day. And in the hands of Bowen Design as a company, one of the best companies, I would say, in the world when it comes about collectibles and quality, and production, uh, I think you know they take care of the characters really well, and I think they did this with this. This is not the first um, or the only uh, cable produced by Bowen Designs. They have uh, Bowen Designs has produced uh, starting from the the mini bus and then some other uh, statues. There's the one on top of a sentinel, uh, sentinel head. Um, that is really hard to come by. Uh, it was a very small run. That I think only 300 made, and now it's just outrageous to trying to get it. You're looking at uh, for that piece. You're looking uh, right now. They're trying to sell it for two thousand dollars in the aftermarket. Of course, you, you, I'm not gonna pay two thousand dollars for something this size, or for any other any other size. You know, I think it's too much money for one piece. That I personally don't feel that is the best representation of cable, but. There's not really that many statues that represent Cable in this, in this, in the classic version. Um, but there's this, and there's another modern version that was the um, that was also created with that the Sentinel, the Sentinel head. Uh, but that one uh, is the more modern version that is also very cool. Also high price right now in the aftermarket around five hundred dollars. This is the cheapest one. Uh, this actually came out. Um, there's this version, and there is the modern version. Uh, to be honest, I prefer the classic. I, I'm a, a fan of the classic cable, so that's the reason I have this one. But before I go into detail again with the statue, let's go with the box. Uh, as you can see, always with Bowen Designs, the boxes are very small in comparison with the statue. As you can see, it says rather cable, the classic uh, Bowen Designs uh, box. This is classic version from the X-Men. Very cool, the uh, picture. And on this side, as you can see, paint the statue sculpted by the Kutcherek brothers, the amazing Kutcherek brothers, over 12 inches tall, they're strictly limited, and ready to display. And as you can see, all the, the information, all the basic stuff. You know, you know, it's very. The boxes are very simple, are colorful, but they're this. That, this is Bowen Design style. As you can see, this is number 693 or 700. Still a small run number compared to um, other. Other, other statues from other companies. Um, but going to the piece, I, I'm really, like I said, I'm a fan of Cable. And I really wanted to have a piece that resembled this character that I really love from that era. As you know, I already reviewed the Bishop, I have Bishop. I wanted to have both. Uh, you really have both. And I think even with the Deadpool, at the end of this video, I probably have, I'm gonna have a comparison with, uh, with those two. But as you can see right here, this piece is phenomenal. Uh, I like it. Uh, there's some little things that I feel that this piece needs more, and I'm gonna mention those. But looking at the piece, looking at the statue, if this comes very simply. Um, it's very simple. It comes inside, well, well packaged, and uh, well, you know, protected in that package in the box. And as you can, it comes with a base, uh, very nice base. There's a lot of intricate detail in that base, as you can see. Um, it comes with the statue. He goes with a peg here. Very uh, once it goes in, it doesn't move, doesn't rock. It's very well uh, protected. And then it comes with this part 
with this gun that comes with a very, very powerful and strong magnet, as you can see right there. I like this magnet. I think it's even stronger than the one that was provided for Bishop. Is I, I like it. I personally do. And as you can see, that's a big, 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 big gun. As you can see right here in this base, um, very there's a lot of debris, as you know. Um, you know, in this case, Nathan Summers, the son of Scott Summers and and Madeline Pryor, the clone of Jean Grey. He grew up in the future. He, he was born in this time, but he was sent to the future where he was raised and pretty much he had to battle, you know, uh, a world that was pretty much against uh, mutants and everything. So, you know, you, if you know the story. Uh, so in his future, in the distant future, he's always been a, a time traveler. You know, there's always a persecution and he lives in, you know, as a renegade, pretty much. He's a renegade uh, in constant battle and trying to protect protect himself, you know, and protect the lives of those around him. And he's a leader. Um, but as you can see, the base has so much debris. And I like this, this. with Bowen, they really create bases. They they really do, you know, it is amazing. And now that, you know, it just, they, they put so much detail and this is the quality of that Bowen designs produced. Now, as you can see, uh, one of the things back in the 90s and one of the things that was added to this piece um, or, you know, to this character was all the pouches and extra pouches and all the protections. They are very infamous by now. A lot of people dislike something that um, now a lot of people criticize a lot. But honestly, I personally, during that time, they were cool. You know, as a kid growing up during the 90s and early 90s, because um, the first appearance of, uh, in this case, of this character, Nate the Baby, appear in 1986 in Uncanny X-Men, you know, was created by Chris Claremont and Rick Lenardi. But he didn't show up till in the 90, in the 1990 on uh, New Mutants 87. That's when he came to be, you know, created by Louis Simonson and um, uh, Rob Liefeld uh, as what we see now. And in the New Mutants, he was pretty much, uh, it was different disguise. But now after that, when you saw him coming out in the X-Force, uh, he added all these extra pouches and kind of militaristic type of uh, figure, but you know, it, it's just cool. It was one of the coolest, one of the, in, in that time, one of the, the biggest sellers of Marvel. This was the hot commodity back then. It was a hot thing that everybody wanted to have. And you know, there's a lot of people that criticize what Rob did back in the time, back in that day, you know, because of the, 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 all the art, art style. A lot of people have criticized Rob for his art style. I'm not here to really judge him. I really grew up with it. I liked it. It's and and a problem. It was the style. And I think Bowen Designs did a, such an amazing deal with this. You you can see the, all the detail. He has all this the, the hand grenades, the pouches. It's just fantastic. They put so much detail like, as always. And you can see the arms and you barely you, you don't see the the you know what, what once you take this part and you put it in there, you don't see it and that's a big gun. Big, big, but big gun. And then here's another gun here on this side. Amazing, as always. You know, I really like this. The, you know, everything they did. It's just, it's just fascinating. Fascinating. You know, all that stuff. You know, I like this. Actually, I like it more. Um, this, this big size compared to the one that they have on the bishop. I like this a lot better. Um, it's just fascinating. The, the musculature is there. The definition is there. The little detail adds to this piece fantastically. Uh, and looking at that face, looking at that, um, his communicator right there, and looking at that face. It's just, you know, honestly, there's no way that you can complain <laughs> about this piece. You know, I like it. Some people say that this was a little cartoony face. Um, it might seem cartoony when you see it. And it, the truth is that I would like this, actually. And that's one of the, the, the reasons that a lot of people haven't really looked at this big, uh, piece as much. is because uh, a fierce appearance, uh, and, and it's not as photogenic in... Um, in pictures or videos but in person is impressive and he has a lot of great things that really uh, you know make this piece shine I like you know the paint application is fantastic as you can see he has blue eyes uh, you know it's just fantastic it's very clean you know even on the pouches everything is clean I wish that I was a little more definition on the pouches here but still there it looks good the only thing that I, I feel that the piece needs is a much better a more mature face it doesn't have it it's true what people say that it's not as mature it looks a little actually a little Asian uh, a little you know kind of short uh, small 
a little rounded i wish it was a little more square um more defined you know and but it didn't happen so but regardless of that i think it's it's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous portrait another thing i feel that it's not as bulky i wish it was more muscular that would represent the the, the character of the you know, um, the 90s, pretty much bulky and big and massive because, you know, he, Nathan, he is a big man. Cable is a big man. Besides that, the paint application is so clean. I love everything. The brownish. Uh, when I received this piece, I thought it was had some stains. You know, that was my first impression. But then I realized that actually this is not stains. This is part of the paint application. Uh, you know, he lives in constant, um, you know, persecution. He's constantly running away and, and battling so I, I don't think he has time to clean up as much and yeah that was the little stains represent like some type of mud in his boots and in his clothes so that's pretty cool you know I, I, I like that that Bowen really adds those little details that really present a lot of things now uh, with the paint application I was increased about this blue at first I thought you know that's something I, w I wish it was like a silver but there's a lot of silver there's a lot of definite there's a lot of different colors you know there's the same monochrome type of colors you know brown and you have some blue and silver so this kind of differentiates that uh, you know even if it was dark it would be good but now I really appreciate it it's not that bad it really looks humongous it's big and, and powerful honestly Personally, I prefer this, this sculpture, than the one on the Sentinel, and I just pay a fraction uh, of what, on um, this piece, I pay um, just a, uh, a, a one-tenth of what I would pay for the other piece, you know. So, honestly, I don't see the need for me to have that piece when I already have a bishop on top of a Sentinel. A lot of people love the Sentinel heads, but honestly, I think it's, an over, it's overdone. It's a lot of pieces that have come out with that. I don't see the need to have more of them. I like the way it is. It is it is a nice representation of cable. Uh, it really really gives a lot a lot to this piece. It's a, it's a nice action pose uh, where he's pretty much you can pose it with a lot of things in, in the battle mode, and it looks you know sick. It looks fantastic. Now it's time for comparison. Let me just bring some pieces so I can show you how does it um, display with other pieces from Kotobukiya and from Bowen. All right, guys. Now here it is. Um, this piece with. Um, with another Kurubikiya pieces. In this case, I have um, you know Colossus and I have Magneto. Uh, as you know, all, all know, uh, Kurubikiya tends to be a little bit bigger and bulkier uh, than Bowen designs pieces. Uh, is uh, some pieces from Bowen designs, like the 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 new uh, Hulk variant and uh, other pieces, tend to be a little larger. Uh, but most of them are just um, a tiny little bit smaller compared to Kotobukiya. That's not a big deal, really, if you know how to display this stuff. Uh, as you can see right here, um, in this case, uh, Magneto and um, Colossus, they are raised a little bit higher. So they also, and the bulk of them, they makes them look a lot bigger than Cable. Uh, besides that, I think they look fantastic. Uh, you know, if you're able to get a riser and rise this above and, you know, in a way where you can uh, lift it up a little bit and that's something that a lot of people do, you're going to have no problem with this. Uh, I think besides that little size difference, and that's one of the reasons why I was saying that I wish there was a little bulkier because even though in this little shorter side, uh, even if it's bulkier, he will look a lot more massive. Um, but, you know, you can always play with display. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are great pieces. Uh, these are one of the best pieces by, in this case, by uh, Eric Sosa, by uh, Karabukia. And having uh, also this also magnificent piece, uh, quality-wise and, and all the way in art by uh, the Kucharik brothers and by Bowen Designs is really, it's, 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 you know, it's candy. Uh, for me it is. I don't have a riser with me uh, right at this moment, but I have, uh, I lifted up a few inches, you know, maybe just an inch above. And it is get it gets closer. Um, you can always display anything uh, from different sizes. It's all the matter of how you gonna display it. If you can raise something above, there's many ways that you can go and get risers. There's plastic risers, invisible risers. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, it just takes a little imagination. Um, the way uh, you can do displays, it the display is, is such an important part of any piece. If you can get the pieces, the parts together in a way that you can uh, lift up the ones that are sh shorter or put them in different angles, you will be able to pull off a lot of great things. So this is just an idea. I'm just giving you an idea so you, you, you'll you see the possibilities are there for any piece to be displayed. Alright guys, and this is actually 
the best way to display this piece, in my opinion. The best way. Uh, of course, I can move around things around, probably Bishop in the center, and uh, in this case, Kevl on the side. But besides that, um, it, he looks fantastic. Of course, like I said before, Bowen uh, uh, scale is a little sh smaller, shorter. So if you decide just if you only collect Bowen designs, like some people do, they just don't like Cut of Kia, uh, you still uh, you have a great great deal with this piece. He looks fantastic, as you can see right here. Both creations of Rob Liefeld, uh, Liefeld, uh, they're amazing. Uh, right here, you have Cable, you have uh, Deadpool, uh, very representative of the era. Uh, they also worked together in in different. Um, back in the 90s and then in the 2000s, they have their own series ongoing, very popular. And then you have representative characters as well as and as famous and as popular back in the 90s as Cable that was Bishop. I think two of the most amazing time travelers and uh, great characters together. Uh, I, I like the way they are presented. I like what the Kutcherek brothers have done here with these pieces. It is just fantastic, uh, honestly. It, it is a fascinating piece. Let me just uh, move this around so I can give you an idea what I'm talking about display that I think is the best way to display this piece. Uh, and I think it's, it's just the perfect way to do it. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just trying to move things around. And here, this is it. This is the best way, in my opinion, to present these characters together. Uh, this way is fantastic. If you display them like this, personally, I think you have you have a winner. This is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing piece. I like what Bowen Designs did. I like what they present here. Uh, these three pieces together for me are just winners. I just uh, they're just perfect displayed this way, and that's how I'm gonna display, it. and that's why how I display it. Uh, I recommend cable a lot. I do. I wish in this case for um, Kotobukiya for Eric Sosa in some point in time to produce a cable. That would be the killer, the killer, the killer thing. I personally would like to see that. It's not happening yet. Uh, we don't know if it's going to happen. Eventually, in the future, somebody else is going to do it. For the time being, if you really want a cable and you would like to have a cable in your collection and you don't have $2,000 to spend on, and the, in this case, the, the classic uh, museum post version on top of the Sentinel head, this is the one that will fit the bill. You can find them for around $200. Uh, I, I don't know if by the time I'm posting this video, I still the deal is going, but you can go to Rocky's Vault that you live in the United States. Um, and actually, they have it for like $175. So it comes out after you do the shipping for $200. So still, it's a great, great deal. Um, it is a, uh, it's an amazing piece. I like it. There's other cables also, uh, more modern versions. Um, I'm not as crazy on that, but I like the classic. If you like the classic, I think you'll be satisfied with this piece. Uh, yes, it needs a little more bulk. Uh, maybe the face is a little uh, too uh, too young, uh, youthful compared to um, what, what would you like to see. But besides that, I think you have a killer piece. One that eventually will go up in price like everything else that, you know, everything, every collectible, everything created by Bowen Designs, it will go up in price. So it will be harder to get. So right now that you can get it for $200, you still have a, such a great deal. You will, we'll see a PF in the future? Yes, we will. When? Who knows? Um, to be honest, I'm not, you know, killing myself for that. I really like this scale. It's my favorite scale uh, because I can display them like this. I have more space to display. And you know you can have really nice, nice looking pieces. So, once again, I thank you for this. Uh, thank you for the time that you have taken uh, to watch this video. Uh, you know, stay tuned. I have more reviews. Please um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it. Uh, please follow me on Facebook. Also follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on those places. You know, it is it is fun to spend time with you to communicate and you know to chat with you in a more personal way. And I thank you for your comments. So I uh, thank you for your support. And as, uh, like I said, you know, right now you can find them in many places, many stores. This piece you can find it, in, you know, in the aftermarket for good prices. So, you know, if you are really looking interested on this piece, I will say go ahead before it goes it goes up in price, and then you regret not being able to purchase it when you had the chance. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one, and stay tuned. Uh, have a great day. See you on the next one.
you win.